What's up, guys? We got some sports back tonight. We got ourselves a football game this evening. Felt weird last night. First time in a while. while. There was no No basketball, no baseball. baseball. There was just no sports. What am I supposed to do with my hands? Yeah. Well, I can think of some things you can do with your hands. But uh, no sports last night was was really weird. Uh, Felt good. I passed out really, really early. Went to sleep early. Wasn't checking my phone for anything. It felt good for a night, not going to lie. Although I know for dorks like you, there's LOL stuff coming up, isn't there? So like you got to get your esports on, right? So unfortunately, there's not. There's the world on Saturday morning, but that's like there's only one match, so there's no there's only a showdown for it, which kind of sucks. And then that there's like that's the world finals, so they're off for a couple months after that. It sucks. I know. I know you feel my pain. I know, right? Like, man, I just got to get into that esports stuff. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Anyway, guys, uh, we are here to talk about the showdown for tonight. We got the Panthers taking on the Falcons. Uh, you were just touching up. You just kind of hit me with the idea that uh, there's some bad weather games this weekend. And it sounds like this game is not terrible, but it's also going to be a bit windy, possibly a bit gusty, not exactly great for uh, football. Now, I wouldn't, you know, it's everybody in the game and it's a showdown, so I don't read too much into it. But it might make you like the ground game. More than the passing game, just a little bit. Agreed. So, all right, let's talk over this one. Uh, did a long members-only video for this one because we went through a bunch of different uh, potential builds and different ways you can go about it. If you want the members-only video, uh, day passes are up. Get the NFL package. Be a monthly customer. We'll take whatever you guys is best suited for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, but... As far as best value for dollar goes, like the NFL package is now $69. This will cover you for the next 10 weeks of the regular season. In addition to the playoffs, we do cash, we do GPP, we do private videos for showdowns. Uh, We've added this thing now that we have a little extra free time where we let customers pose individual questions. We got about 20 of them already, and we're going to go through those in a members only video today. Uh, Should be a lot of fun. We got written summaries. We got video. We got a little bit of everything, guys. $69 one-time payment gets you everything for the rest of the season. All available at the website below. Otherwise, if you want to pay manually, we got the PayPal and the Venmo address below. Let's get it, man. Uh, Don't forget to mention show sponsor, Overlaid Fantasy Sports. Did a video earlier today breaking down the matchup shop. Uh, The progressive tournaments are up. Uh, Excited to talk through that with you a little bit later, either today or tomorrow. And if you haven't played on Overlay yet, I keep mentioning this, and then somebody wasn't sure. Mr. Buckley, I think is his name, asked yesterday. So for real, like if you were a new overlay player, like if you signed up to play on overlay today and made a $1,000 deposit, yes, you'd have to play that money on the website. But if you show me a screenshot of that, we'll give you a free lifetime membership to the five-pack. Um, and you could probably just double your money on overlay because that's what it's all about. I mean, you really can't beat that, man. All right, guys. Subscribe to the station if you're new to it. So let's start out. With Mr. Todd Gurley, and uh, I wanted to bring this up. So he's kind of a polarizing figure in the DFS world these days. I know some people think he doesn't look good. I've heard other people say the opposite. Maybe it's somewhere in the middle. That's for, you know, each of your own eye test on how you think he looks. The one thing you cannot argue, though, is Atlanta's given him the rock. Dude's got 48 touches over the past two weeks, and now he goes up against the Carolina Panthers team that, you know, we talked about this at length on the members only video. But there's no way to change this. Like, they're top five against wide receivers and quarterbacks, but bottom of the league against running backs or near the bottom of the league against running backs. Todd Gurley is getting a ton of touches for the Atlanta Falcons. There's a lot to like right here, especially the fact that, like, he's still an end zone hawk. Even when he's trying not to score, he still scores. Yeah, I mean, you can't beat that, right? So just had a really good game against Carolina. You've talked about ad nauseum today how how bad Carolina is against the run, and it's it's true. Gurley's also looked good recently. Uh, he kind of uh, doesn't resemble quite yet the girly of old, but you see flashes. His upside isn't as high as, as you'd like it to be because, you know, he's just not the girly of old. However, on this slate and this only game, he could easily be the highest scorer overall today. We both like him a lot in a game that I think Atlanta has a good shot of winning. I think it's competitive regardless. Yeah, I, the only time I wouldn't like girly here is if you think like Atlanta gets way down. And I don't anticipate that. Again, we both... I think I think Carolina squeaks it out and you think Atlanta squeaks it out, but that doesn't really matter because either way we came to the same conclusion that we expect this to be a relatively competitive game. So I'll mean that's all that really matters in this situation for uh, as far as Todd Gurley goes. And my top thing for him is the Panthers cannot keep running backs out of the end zone. 
And even though he may not be the girly of old, as we've discussed, he still is good at finding his way to hitting pay dirt. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I mean, I completely agree with all your points. All right. Next up, let's take a look at the running back on the other side of the equation. That's going to be running back Mike Davis. So as it stands, I haven't seen Kristen McCaffrey officially ruled out, but from everything I've read and you've read, uh, he's officially ruled out. You know what I mean? Like he ain't playing tonight. Yeah. So enter Mike Davis in what sets up to be his last week as the main guy for the Carolina Panthers. So I hope like hell that his ownership is down tonight because of the fact that his last two weeks were less than stellar. So they matched up with New Orleans, which is good against the run. They went against the Bears, which are pretty much good against everybody from a defensive standpoint. So it was not a great situation for him. Tonight is, though. Atlanta has struggled against pass-catching running backs for years now, and that's exactly who Mike Davis is in this offense as a pass-catching running back. So we saw him here a couple weeks ago get nine receptions on 10 targets. I like him to have another efficient day in what is likely his last week as the you know, the man at running back for the Carolina Panthers. I completely agree. Uh, just a lot to like here and probably his last spot as a starting running back. Uh, they're going to feature him because they have been featuring him. He hasn't played well the past two weeks, like you mentioned, but tough spots, bounce back spots supreme here. We like both running backs in this game. Matter of fact, we like a third running back because I'm sure we're about to get to him. He is literally the next person up and that's going to be Brian Hill, the Atlanta Falcons. So, is Brian Hill going to, like, break the slate today? No, come on, guys. Uh, only under the situation where maybe Gurley got hurt, uh, but that's not what you're going to call for. I do think it's like it's like a runner-runner flush draw in poker. It can happen about 3% of the time. It's a valuable thing to have in your back pocket, but it's not what you play for. Brian Hill, however, is only 2,200. He's got four-plus drafting points in every game this year. Panthers are not good against running backs. Uh, he's got at least two targets in the passing game in every game this year. And in a situation where we just told you, we think it's a competitive game. But if we're wrong and one of these two teams gets up a lot, I think Hill is in the game later in the game, which could be important for you. If they get very heavy into the passing game and comeback mode, I think Hill could get a couple extra looks. Uh, if they're up by a bunch and Atlanta plays a great game right here, he might get a couple extra runs in the fourth quarter. Yeah, so the biggest thing here is he's 2.2K. If you look at this slate, there just aren't many options down there that are viable. Hill is more than viable here. He'd be viable in the 3K range. He's even cheaper than that. He's done something in every game. And you're right. First off, we mentioned it with Gurley. Carolina is awful against the run. He's going to get some work. If by the off chance Gurley gets hurt, he's going to get a ton of work. And in any blowout scenario or big lead scenario, he's going to get work. So a lot to like here in all formats at this price. Right. And again, like I, I made the comparison to a runner, runner, flush draw in poker for you poker players out there. The odds of somebody getting hurt are actually probably higher than that. Again, you don't want to play for injuries, but I think we've all been watching the NFL this year. Dudes, especially skill position players, are limping off the field every other play, it seems like. So, like I used Carlos Hyde Sunday night. I didn't use him because I expected Chris Carson to get hurt, but there is always that back pocket play of having a guy who could be like a legit, you know, Every down running back in this situation, if Gurley, who's been injury prone, has to limp off the field for every re- for you know for whatever the reason might be, it, it does happen way too often. No doubt about it. You know, it's the byproduct of this violent game that we enjoy watching. Mm-hmm. All right. So speaking of backup running backs, Curtis Samuel is almost like the backup running back in Carolina right now, but he's also their third wide receiver. He's getting involved all over the place right now. I think he's got. A minimum of one rushing attempt in four straight, if my memory serves me correctly. He's got a high efficiency rate in the passing game. And a point that you'll bring up that sometimes I, you know, we all gloss over in the industry is, like, he's good. He's talented. Yeah, he's maybe not quite as good as DJ Moore or Anderson, but he's a good third wide receiver. Yeah, he's, like, positionless almost. This is his problem in the NFL, which is rare, but it's just his the case. Of him. He's got talent. He's explosive. Um he can do a lot when the ball's in his hands. And we've seen lately them try to get him much more involved. Uh, he scored last week, coming off a really good game, obviously. I like him a lot here. He's not a punt play like Hill, but for his upside, like you talked about, we don't want to say he's like too cheap because he has a floor, but his upside at this price point, you know, he could be the best dollar for dollar play on this slate for sure. Yeah, it wasn't our ideal best on paper build but when we were going through alternative builds on the members only video we did play around with the idea of him in the captain spot a little bit again i wouldn't do that in a cash game i don't think that's your best build 
But in an alternative GPP build, I do think he's going to be extremely low owned in the captain position for, you know, all the obvious reasons. But it's not a crazy like he's coming off back to back double digit weeks. I think it's not insane to think he does it again. Agreed. All right. Last up, a guy that we would reserve for more of a GPP only play would be Hayden Hurst, the tight end of the Atlanta Falcons, Um, specifically because there's too much upside with a couple of the other guys to want to go here based on the price of him. But also, he's got growing chemistry with Matt Ryan. And I do think that he is in like this dead zone on the builds that you're just not a lot of people that are going to get to him. And if you're a GPP player, Hayden Hurst is no scrub. Like, I like the idea of using him in GPPs. Yeah. So we talked about him a bunch. Um, he's not going to make your ideal build. There's other guys that are more desirable to use. But I think that means his ownership is going to be decently low in tournaments. And as we talked about, it wouldn't be crazy to see him score once, twice here, growing rapport with Matt Ryan. If he does do that, he's obviously taking away from the other Atlanta pass catchers. So you're getting a lot of leverage. You're getting a lot of leverage. I love that. I love that point right there that he's taking away from Julio and Ridley. And you know, people going with the Atlanta offense are going to roster those guys. It doesn't mean that Hurts is going to be unowned because it's the only game in, you know, it's the only game in play. But he's going to be much slower on than those guys. Don't you agree? If you take a look at Hurst, Ridley, Julio, and Gurley, I, I, again, I can't obviously say this factually early in the day, but my assumption is Hurst would be by far the lowest owned of those four. You know the thing with Hurst here is like he's cheaper than, than those other guys, but he's not cheap enough where if you roster him, it costs you one of those other guys. Right? Like I think people would be more – I bet you Gage might have – higher ownership three thousand dollars less i 100 percent agree there he will have more ownership just for that reason right so that's the thing to like about hayden hurst is he is within that like i said i called it a dead zone no don't get me wrong hayden hurst you're not getting him at one percent it's a showdown format he's still going to have a double digit ownership percentage next to him but when you're trying to build for gpps and differentiate yourself that's a lot lower than what you would expect todd Gurley or julio to have Mm -hmm. no doubt about it so, guys, that's what we got for today. Um, looking forward to going through some members-only questions with you when we're done right here for customers. If you want to be a customer, we would love to have you. The website link is below. Also, you can expect us to do a second public video for the main slate on Sunday morning. Uh, we've both been reading into the weather a little bit today. There's going to be some funky changes you might have to make courtesy of uh, high winds throughout the United States come Sunday. Uh, but we'll save that for Sunday morning because I prefer to check the weather morning off, right? Like that is definitely something that can change. I live in Wisconsin, you live in Cleveland. We know all about changing weather. No doubt about it. So, all right, guys, don't forget to click the thumbs up button for this video. Have a great Thursday, and it's nice to have some sports ball to watch tonight. Thanks, guys.